Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be finishing the lighting segment by making some minor changes to the code. Nothing huge, I'm saving that for the next segment. You'll see when we actually do it. But, yeah, we're just going to do some very, very minor rearrangement of the code. Now, you might have noticed that all of a sudden I have tons and tons of errors in my project. What's going on? Well, I actually went ahead and did something. And, in case you haven't guessed, by the big red underscore, I've deleted the resource loader class, and I've moved the resource loading methods to, well, the respective classes. So the load texture method is now in the texture class, the load mesh method is now in the mesh class, and the load shader method is now in the shader class. And I, yeah, I could have shown that, but I thought it would be more interesting to have all the errors showing up and you wondering before I showed you, so yeah. Hope that didn't throw you off too much. But yeah, so I just moved the methods in here, and what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be moving control of resource loading to whatever class needs to load the resource. Because, you know, it makes a lot more sense for a shader to be able to load its own data, because, I mean, you think about it, what's the difference between initializing a shader with some string from memory versus some string from your hard drive? Not much. So, and yeah, it just makes more sense. So, that's what I'm going to be doing for now. So, I'm going to start with the shader. What I'm going to do is, first off, I'm going to make this private, because I don't want everything being able to load shaders. And, well, the way I'm going to handle this is, I'm going to copy my add vertex, add geometry, and add fragment shader. I'm going to create new ones called add vertex, geometry, whatever, from file. And the difference is, this one, rather than just calling add program with the text, is going to call add program with load shader text. And so yeah, shader's probably going to be the easiest one to sort of clean up like that. The only sort of challenge here is we're going to have to go here and change resource loader dot load shader and everything to just this. So, just the file name, and this change it to from file. Now, it's going to initialize it, it's going to load basicvertex.vs, and it's going to go ahead and load that shader into the shader program. So, I actually think that's nicer, but maybe that's just me. So, and in fong shader, same story. Change it to fongvertex.vs and fongfragment.fs, and change it to from file. And there you go. That pretty much completes the shader part of it. So next up, I'm going to do texture. So texture, I'm going to change this to private. And this should be null, not zero. Not, not sure why it's zero, but hey. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to be adding a constructor, a public texture which takes in some string file name. And it's going to initialize it using load texture. Now, here's the thing. Right now I'm returning a new texture with the ID. But, you know, since I'm trying to initialize it into constructor, that doesn't make much sense. So, I'm going to change it to just returning ID and returning an integer instead. So, then I'm going to return this back to return zero. Now it makes sense. So, now, I have this method, it's going to get me the ID and just return the ID. Which means I can just say this, and say load texture file name. And that fixes up the texture class. Now all that's left is mesh, and this is probably going to be the trickiest of them all. So just like before, I'm going to make this private, and I'm going to change this around a little bit. I'm going to change this to just calling add vertices and not have some result mesh because same reasons that we sort of did the texture. And this is not... Okay, this can't be static. So I'm going to make this just, just plain private. Because I need access to the instant ver or instance variables. Or instant meth instanced methods. There we go. So... And with this, I'm actually going to do one more change to the mesh class. I'm going to get rid of these add vertices methods, or at least the public versions of them. Because what are these methods doing? 
They're init methods. They take some data and they initialize a mesh based on it. And initialization really should be done in the constructor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this, the normal constructor out, and create a public mesh which takes in these vertices as a parameter. And what this is going to do is I'm actually going to keep this copy of the method around as private. And I'm just going to, well, I'm going to call a constructor with vertices, indices, and false, like that one did. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a new public mesh which takes in the parameters of this one. And that's just going to set up the mesh with this and and call add vertices with vertices and indices and calc normals. So there we go. That way it just it makes more sense. You're initializing the mesh in the constructor, not with a disguised init method. And yeah, so now all I need is I need the public mesh which takes in the string file name. And what this is going to do is it's going to call this method, but I still need to set this up. So for now, I'm just going to copy and paste. If I really need to reuse that code at some point, I'll go ahead and change it. In fact, I probably will think of one of that someday, but for now, I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to do load mesh file name. And yeah, that's bothering me. So I'm going to create a private void called just init mesh gl. Why not? Because it's doing OpenGL stuff. Well, I'll just say init mesh, init mesh data because that makes more sense. There. Otherwise, it's going to bother me. So init, me init mesh data. Jeez, I can't speak today. And there we go. So... Now, with almost everything in our mesh class a private method now, we can go to our game class, the only class which still has some error with it, and change this around a little bit. I can get, go ahead and get rid of this line because, well, we don't have a resource loader anymore. I can change this to creating just a new texture with test.png. That should load properly. And here I can say mesh equals new mesh and pass in the data. And with that, we've factored out the resource loader. So now if I run, hey, we get the exact same thing, except I actually went ahead and turned on all our light sources. But now we, we don't have the resource loader. We don't have to worry about that. And yeah, so this is what our engine looks like with all of our light source, or the example lights we've put together throughout this, turned on. I did adjust the direction light to be intensity of 0.1f rather than 0.8 because otherwise it just washes everything out, but other than that, these are all the example materials we've done. This is all we've created in this segment. We've gone from just a plain, flat texture to all these different lighting effects that we can do. And I know what you may be thinking. Surely, Benny, surely this can't be it. Surely this can't be all of the lighting we've done, because, I mean, I saw your FAQ video. You had all this fancy bumpage and all this, these other neat lighting effects. I mean, why, why aren't we doing that? And here's the thing. This is all the lighting that comes from the rendering equation. All other lighting effects, for the most part, are done with mapping. All the bumping I did, that's creating a normal map, which, if you haven't heard of it before... You know those normals we calculated? Essentially it just puts those in a texture, so we have precise control of how light reflects off the surface at any given point. So yeah, you know exactly, you can literally paint which direction is up on the surface. It's kind of cool. And yeah, that same goes for all, pretty much all the other effects you see in 3D engines. Reflection, which for some reason tons of people are suddenly interested in, it's done with mapping for the most part. Shadowing, which another thing tons of people have asked me about for some reason. Again, mapping for the most part. That's not to say mapping's the only way to do these things. It's just generally the preferred way of doing it in most cases. So that's why you're not seeing more of the lighting effects. I'm saving that for the mapping section where it makes more sense because, well, 
we're going to be adding a bunch of different maps of different things we can do. That's where we'll get into normal mapping. That's where we'll get into shadow mapping. That's where we'll get into parallax occlusion mapping, which makes things literally like pop out in 3D. So you can literally paint like 3D data into a texture, if that makes any sense. It's, it's an illusion, but it's pretty interesting. You should look it up if you haven't seen it before. And, yeah. So, that's pretty much all I wanted to do in this video. But, before I go, I've gone ahead and put together a little bonus for you. Because so many people have asked me about this for some reason. I have no idea why, but they have. And, you might be wondering, well, what is this bonus, Benny? What have you been spending all this extra time you haven't been recording videos doing? And, here it is. For some reason, so many people have wanted to see a version of this engine written in C++. I, and the biggest reason I've heard for this is they think that writing in C++ will automatically make it go faster. Here's your evidence. No, it doesn't. And just to prove to you, I'll go ahead and run. Yeah. Same... Oh, I didn't turn on the directional light. Well, that would explain a few things. One moment. I know. I'm super professional about this type of thing. So, I'll actually create the directional light this time. And now we have the same example scene. So yeah, as you see, same thing. The and... Except, well, it's written in C++. And you'll see our engine isn't automatically running fast. We're getting the same type of performance. I don't know why everyone thinks that writing this thing in C++ automatically makes it go faster, but... Here you go anyways, this is our 3D engine, written in C++. And it's basically the same, in fact, really, it is the same thing as the Java version, except, well, it's C++ code. All the classes are the same, except, well, there's like STB image, but that's sort of the image loader class, so... Yeah, it's, it's the same thing, except in C++. I thought for, people would be interested in that, because so many people have asked me about it. And yeah. As soon as I can get a good way of distributing the libraries I set up, which I'm probably just going to include in when I upload the source, then I'll upload it to GitHub. But yeah, there you go, because a lot of people seem to be interested in that for some reason. So here you go. And yeah, with that, that's just about everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you... whoops! <laughs> I'll see you next time where we won't actually be moving on to the next segment. Next time, we're going to be starting the Wolfenstein 3D clone. So, yeah, be excited for that. We're finally starting it. And if you're wondering about the engine, the next segment we're going to be doing is merging the, the Wolf 3D with the, li er, <laughs> with the engine. We're going to be taking all the things we learned about the engine from doing that clone, and we'll be incorporating that into our 3D engine. So with that, thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.